Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name's Kevin, I am a geek, you are watching Kevin the Geek, and today it is Sunday. So that means we've got a little bit more of Still Games come up. This is the final episode of the third series, um, at least I hope so, because obviously with series two I seem to miss out on an episode entirely. Um, from everything I've done, I've tried to do a little bit more uh, meticulous research uh, this time around, and it from everywhere I've read, it says that there's only six episodes in Series 3. So, unless everywhere I read is wrong, I, I don't know what else to say. So, if, if that is the case, I'm sorry. Uh, but this is uh, apparently the final episode of um, of the third series, Episode 6. And this one is apparently called AF. Which, I'm guessing, with the Scottish uh, dialect, that means off. So, is that someone going somewhere? Is that... Someone falling off something? I have no idea. Let's find out. Silence latest reaction in 3, 2, 1. <laughs> ah. <sighs> right then. Let's get a look at you. Oh no. No, 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 not good. Not good at all. Aye, not good. Not good at all. It's all in the chest. Listen. <laughs> what is going on with everyone today? You're just going to have a lie down on the couch. We have a wee hot water bottle. Yes, John. Bye. Is that John, his son? <laughs> ah, that'll give the bastard something to think about. That's bad news, that. What's bad news? Make note you're at death's door and there's hee-haw rang with you. And him away out there worried sick. <laughs> Is he buggery? He called last month there when I had the flu. Sure I was bad with it, Jack? Aye. Aye, and he gives it on the phone. Look, it's probably just a cold, Dad. Uh, Take a couple of aspirins and away to your bed. Mm. Ah, that's right. Ah, see, that's you clamp now, because you know what he's like. He's a he's an uncaring bastard. That's enough now. Do you know he was out there at the phone? What? Oh, oh I don't know, Dad. We'll probably not get a holiday this year. We're too busy. Which I know to be a lot of pish, because the Grand Wayne let slip to me that they're, they're going to her mods for a fortnight in the... Uh, hang me. Uh, uh, Runcorn. I mean, that's only just doing the road. Yeah, yes, Manchester, you're quite right, Victor. You have indeed been treated shoddily, nay shitily. If I were you, I would contact my city solicitor and inform them the McDead millions will not be passed on to the natural son John, <laughs> but awarded in its totality to the cat and dog home. He shall suffer for his lack of concern by receiving not a curdy of my millions and none of my stuff. Surely <laughs> he'll be expecting to be bequeathed the side plate of Blackpool. Not that he ever clap eyes on the tea towel of Balloch. Oh, my God! That's worth a lot of money. Oh, Peg, how'd you get on? Fantastic. She was that accurate. Oh, what'd you tell you? I'm coming into money. Aye. I'm going to get a holiday. I have to worry less. Oh. <laughs> and I've got a big change coming. Well, oh, that's great news. Hadn't took me now. Good for you, Peggy. Hi. Next. Oh, jeez. That's me. <laughs> uh, leave your scampi on the table, hen. Then I want my tent honk to it. Right. <laughs> What's a scampi and what? Oh, Taro, 250. That's cheap. Oh, dear. It isn't Long John Silver. If I was Long John Silver, you'd be first to walk the plank, you wank. Oh. <laughs> Tam. Very good. Eric. What's wrong with you? Fit's louting. I can barely stun on it. Is it a bunion or something? No, it's not a bunion. Here, wait till I show you. Whoa, you <laughs> bastard. What is that? Put your slipper back on. That would give you the book. Mm. I'm seeing the doctor in the morning. He's going to give me something for it. Uh, a hacksaw. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a joy to be old. That's not getting better. That's finished. Tell you what, though. When it drops off next week, I'll give you a tenner. We'll stick it behind the bars of a dragon. <laughs> oh, Bobby. 
I'm in agony here. Oh, what's going on? Oh, it's a scanty in Taro night. £2.50. Peggy organised it. What's Taro? Cards. Yeah. Looking into the future and that. Apparently she's very, very good. What a sight! Oh, shit! <laughs> I don't think I was happy with their reading. Whiskey, Bobby. Hey, what, uh, what happened there? Uh, it's Dinner Lake. Again, a white and Mackay. Oh. What did you tell her? Tell her she was going to get knocked down by a motor next Thursday. <laughs> what did you Shit! Tell her? That's what is said in the cards. Ella, you're here for entertainment. No tell them they're going to snuff it. Bobby, the cards don't lie. Sorry, just give me one second. Something wrong with my mouse lately. <clears throat> Even though it's not moving or anything, it just flickers, which then obviously brings the bottom bit up. Let's see if that'll sort it. Is there somebody here in pain? With a leg or a foot? Oh! Use my scampi. <laughs> that is a bit whiffy, isn't it? Aye, a wee bit. Do you smoke, Mr Ingram? No, no, not at all, son. I gave it up five years ago. Too dear, sure. How many would you say you smoked a day? Ten, fifteen, say eighty. Eighty? <laughs> eighty if it ain't zero? I would say that could be the reason for your foot. I'm going to send you up to see a Dr Fletcher at the Royal. Get him to have a look at it. Is it that bad, is it? It's pretty bad. Bad enough to claim attendance allowance? Oh, yes, I would say so. I'll just have to fill out the form for the Social Security. Yes! Yes! <laughs> now, listen. That's the number of the hospital. Can you get up there tomorrow? No problem, son. There's just one other person I've got to see first. I'm in the money. I'm in the money. I've got a gammy fit and it's worth an extra 40 quid a week in attendance allowance. Yeah. Oh. What are you looking so chipper about? Oh, the doctor says I've to get extra social security because of my bad fit. So are we? Jesus! What a boggin. What caused that? Years and years of smoking. Here. You might get lucky, Jack. You could be next. Cheery bye. Oh, shit. <laughs> You'll be back in ten minutes fishing that out of there. Push. That's me done with it. <laughs> Jesus. I have known you a long, long time. Problem is, when you've been doing it for that long at that age, you, you're pretty much buggered. It's not uh, a good habit. Problem is, and I, I can count myself in this, I, I've probably smoked since I was about 18. So about, well, about half my life now. Um, about a year ago I moved on to, to the vapes more so than the actual cigarettes. It's not a habit I'm ever kind of happy I started. And it is something that ultimately I would like to give up completely. But it's always easier said than done. You know, it's, it's okay for a non-smoker to say, oh yeah, just quit, we'll, we'll help you, we'll do this and that. When you've been a smoker, if you're a smoker, you know. You know how hard it is to quit. And especially if you're someone like like, uh, like Jack there or, or Winston to, to give it up at that age, it's even harder. And I've never seen you without that pipe. Ah, no, I've... You've just got to watch, but, you know. How's that? Well, they say that when you stop smoking, the first thing that happens is the old weight shoots up. All right. Aye. Right. Something to do with the increase in appetite. That's a fact, eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. You've got a message in your answer machine. Ah, I think it's because you, you, oh, you try and compensate. Indeed you will not. Last time I had a message, you rubbed it out. You try and oh, feel the smoke with something else. That was about two bloody years ago. Have you not had a phone call since then? No. <laughs> You're just jealous because I've got a machine and I've got a message. Are you going to let us hear it or what? Right. You may retrieve the message now. 
Oh, shite. What? I've only went and rubbed it out. Hey! Oh! Uh, uh, only kidding. Are you ready? I ready. OK. Hi, Dad, you know, in. Um, maybe you're sleeping. Look, I hope you're feeling better. I'll uh, phone later. <laughs> there you are. There you are, boy. He's worried. Look, John calls me, if I'm lucky, every six months. He's called yesterday, there he is on the phone the other day. He's sitting up and he's, he's paying attention now. That's no fair. That means you've got him worried for nothing. Yeah. Oh, well, <coughs> it seems to be working. Hello, <laughs> John, son. Yes, I got your message. I just went out for a wee bit of fresh air there. Thought it might do me some good. No, I just seem to have tired myself out. <laughs> Jack? Yes, Jack's here. How? He wants to speak to you. Hmm. Come on. Get it up, you Victor. I am not telling any lies for you. Oh, shit. Here he is. <laughs> Hello, John. Uh-huh. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, he's not great, as I know. No, but he's got me sure. Aye, aye. I'll make sure he gets a right good rest. <laughs> uh -huh. That's a smashing idea, son. That's what to do, aye. Fo phone the motor. O OK. Right you are, Johnny boy. See you later now. All the b all... You are one big lousy bastard. <laughs> I feel lousy. Really lousy. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a oh, snowball or a ton of falls getting abused? Do you know what that bloody spear wife says to me? Ah, uh, the spear wife. She says, you're going to hear about a birth, you're going to get lucky with money, and get this, you're going to die in thirst. <laughs> 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 what are you laughing at? Oh, come on, you don't actually believe that, do you? I don't like to think everybody else said she was dead accurate. She's put a fear of God in me. So, how are you going to meet your maker? Knocked in by car. A silver car. Oh, wait a minute. What? I've got a silver car. Maybe I'm going to knock you down on Thursday so I don't have to pee on Friday. A little bit. £2.50. £2.50? For your fortune? You got a plate of scampi and all for that. Hold the bus, Isa. I think it is safe to assume that your spay wife is talking pish. Well, who's that? Well, scampi, huh? A big bag of that for the cash and carry will set you back about £7.99. <laughs> How many of you are there? Eight is. Eight portions, eh? So that's a quite a skull. Was the tartar sauce? Oh, aye. Aye, so that's another 10p, which leaves you with £1.40. £1.40? Aye, with this transport travel there and back, say £2 each way is £4. Divided by the eight people that will is 50p. Take that away from £1.40, leaves you with 90p. So, you're telling me you queued up to pay 90 pence to be told that you're going to pop your clogs on Thursday? <laughs> so forgive me, Isa, but you're being a stupid cow. If you could make fortunes, would you only be charging 90 pence? Yeah. Would you buggery? Aye. Why don't you give me 90 pence now? And I will tell you that when you wake up in the morning, you'll be Bridget Bardo, huh? Aye. I'm right, Navid. I'm not going to do your job, but I'm not going to do your job. I'm not going to do your job. I'm not going to do Six eggs, Navid. Uh, what, what I just want to say, um, obviously, I did a, a video earlier this week uh, where I reacted to The Office. Um, there was a, a, a similar scene, both here and in that episode with The Office, where basically an employer does a joke on, uh, on one of his employees. There's a big difference between the two jokes there and the way it's delivered. Because like this one, with Naveed, the way he does his jokes, you always know he's, you know, he's taking the piss. And he does it with very good, good-natured ribbing, you know, and it, it's just teasing, if, if anything else. That one that was in, um, in the office, where basically David Brent told his, um, secretary, receptionist, PA, whatever you want to call her, um, where he basically told her that they were firing her because of redundancies, because, because she'd been caught stealing, uh, post-it notes. That is just crossing the line you know that that was just going way beyond the line here at least with this with Naveed it's, it's just 
you know, it's 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 nice. It's teasing. It's not anything too dramatic. I don't think Naveed would ever go like too far with his kind of jokes. Oh, hello, Isa. Isa, that's Noreen Kirkwood had a wee boy, seven pounds six ounces. <laughs> <laughs> You got a wee sharp knife in the house? I do, aye, yeah, how? Both carrots. I'm going to cut them up into wee bits. <laughs> <laughs> then what are you going to do? Are you going to stick them all back together again? No, I'm going to eat them, sure. That's going to keep me half a pipe. Oh, aye, okay. pipe. How are you getting on with that? <sighs> Shite, actually. Couldn't get to sleep for ages last night, and then when I eventually did drop off, dreams, you know. What kind of dreams? Pipe dreams. <laughs> me, bollock naked, running about a tobacco field, slow motion. <laughs> <laughs> the field's on fire. I'm not worried. I just lie down, fill my lungs like that. <laughs> <laughs> Those wee carrots are going to save you, are they? Ah, uh, well, let's hope so. Ah, I'll be mad, John. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's got their yeah. own sick voice. Just getting any character. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Hello, John? Your what? Half an hour, you say? Right. Okay, bye. What? Jack. What? That was John. He's at the airport, he's here. He's going to be here in half an hour. Oh, what shit. Did I tell you. Tell me what? Putting on that performance in the phone, now look what you've done. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? <laughs> Don't drag me into it. I'm doing a hole here. Ah, you're doing a hole, but you dug it yourself. Yeah! Giving it all that, oh, I'm going to go and lie on the couch with a <laughs> hot water bottle. <laughs> <laughs> you worked the boy into a frenzy and now he's here. Right, right. You open the door. Aye. And you say, you're too late, your dad's deed. That's utter What? Shit. He's only just off the phone to you. Says he'll be here in half an hour. What have I do? Open the door and say, Oh, hello, John. In you come. Oh, by the way, your dad died ten minutes ago. <laughs> garbage, Jack. You think of something. How have I to think of something? Well, you were the last one that spoke to him. You probably laid it on too thick. You're to blame. Oh, aye, aye, that's right. I'm to blame, aye. I'm going to accept that. In fact, here's what we'll do. I'll get an iron brew bottle, right? And batter your bastard melon! Hey! Then you will be ill when he comes to the door. <laughs> what a bloody spot you've got us into. Would that be a plastic or a glass bottle up in Scotland for iron brew? What are you doing, but? <laughs> <laughs> nice! How does this sound? What's up with you? Off on a ten, I'm afraid. Oh, jeez, that's bad. What's bad about finding a... Ah, the spare wife. First the birth, now the finding of the money, eh? Ah! I'm going to be killed by Karen Thursday. <laughs> now, Isa, calm your beans. It's a coincidence. I know. You're not going to die on Thursday. Just take it easy, eh? Put it to the back of your mind and don't let your life be ruled by such silliness. You think? Aye. Oh, oh I'm just being daft, haven't I? Aye. But, you know, just in case, eh? Maybe I should uh, pop this in the window, eh? <laughs> <laughs> See, teasing. Grapes, any grapes? Aye, just there. Aye, right, right, eh? Well, let me help people's friend. People's friend. Oh, and I need the uh, Lucasade and the uh, paracetamol. Thank you. Um, Lucasade, always what you need when you're ill. <sighs> you okay, Jack? Eh, me? Aye. Oh, what a bloody day I'm having. Eh, uh, I've keyed up the pipe, you know. Well, good for you. Uh, I'm not on jangly way, but you know. Well, I'm sure that'll pass. I'm sure it will. Now, if I ask you for tobacco under no circumstances, I'll be let me have it, OK? Understood. Doesn't matter how much I want it. Doesn't matter how much you want it. I've not to get it. You've not to get it. Begging, pleading, shouting and bawling, doing on my knees and everything, I have not to get tobacco. No tobacco. Uh, I, I trust Naveed, he won't okay. do it. See you later. He's the one person I could trust not to do it. I'll take a packet of tobacco. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake! Come on, Jack, seal's a seal. Ah, oh, you big bastard, you. Come God on, damn you it! Body, Jack. <laughs> I trusted you, Naveed. I thought if anyone was going to do that, it was going to be Bobby. Uh, who's that? Oh. It's your son, John. Ah, this is you. John. 
Dad? Go ahead, son. It's good. <laughs> Come closer, son. Let me see you. Ah, oh, you're getting old. Just like your dad. How is your flight, son? Oh, never mind that. How are you? Oh, you know. Jack! What? Can I get a wee cup of tea? Aye. Hi. Jack, could you run us up a wee play of sandwiches and all? What do you want on them? Cheese. Could you grate it, but? <laughs> Gr grate it? Put a wee bit of onion through it. Onion? And ranch and pickle. Pickle, right? Oh, yes, Victor's going to murder him. You wish to apply uh, Jack, for rather. attendance allowance? For my fit. You take fits? No, <laughs> for my foot. What's wrong with it? It's knackered. What do you mean? It's sore when I walk, it's sore when I'm sleeping. It's just sore all the time. Right, and you want us to give you extra money for that? Yes. Well, we'll need a doctor's report. Of course. That won't be a problem. Of course it won't. What do you mean, of course it won't? Well, as I can see from your file, it's one of the things you excel in, claiming. In 1992, you claimed for a new cooker and a new fryer because you said two big men came in, tied you up and stole them. That's right. That was horrible, that. Right, and then last year you claimed a laundry allowance because of incontinence due to a motorcycle accident. Yes, yes, that's quite correct. I, I was on the sidecar of my mate Phil's uh, motorcycle and we had an oil patch and boof! That was it. it. It came away and I shot myself. <laughs> that was me after that. I just got into the way of it. I've been doing it ever since. I've got a big nappy on right now. <laughs> so this claim, to be honest, is a bit of a letdown. Eh? It's not very imaginative, is it? I do have a bad foot. I don't think you do. Well, darling, how would you like to get your tongue in between those tootsies? Get that off my desk. I'll just get your form. There we go. I'm a bit confused, though, because she's saying, like, he's great at excelling at making all these claims, but, yeah, she basically said there was two claims. One in 1992 and then one last year, when this would have come out in 2004. That's, what, two claims in 13 years? I think that's a pretty good uh, uh, return. I mean, there could be others that, that she didn't mention, but why wouldn't she mention them then, if, if that's such a big deal? There was no staying with you then? No, we just checked us all into one of the big hotels in the tune. Why don't you just come clean and tell them you've been acting a bloody good? That will be right. I'll go off his nut, Jack. So when are you seeing him again? He's going to pop up later. Anyway, I think he's a chance to get a pint. <laughs> ha! Dad? Oh, oh, shit. What are you doing it? <laughs> what am I doing it, Jack? Eh? Hey, hey, I, I thought we could see if we could maybe manage a wee pint. With all due respect, Jack, I think my dad should be in the house. Hey. John's right, Jack. I should be in the house. <laughs> no, that's a lot of nonsense, Victor, sure. You better come near the world of good. I'll come with you. Excuse me, Dad. Jack. Hello? It's a hotel. My visa number, right? What we do? Uh, go for a pint. But everyone in the clansmen will be wondering what's wrong with me. Uh, okay, pint. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. Take your feathers out of there. He's going to get rumbled, uh, isn't he? I'll just stand here for a wee minute. Catch my breath. It's off a smoky in there, Jack. I'll wait with you then. Right, I'll, I'll wait another then. <laughs> Oh, eh. Uh, no, I'm not going anyway. I'll, I'll get in the pub. Yeah. Here. Listen. Oh, Tam. Eric. Shh. Bobby. Victor. No well at all. What's wrong, man? Nothing. Huh? He's going to South Africa because Victor's made out he's no well. What's he doing that for? He just is. They're going to screw him over, aren't they? They always do. Crinkle, cut, crisps. That's what I like to line with my beer. So three laggers, please, and the, the crisps. Let's get you a seat there. Aye. 
Beer, Victor? Are you sure? I could get you a wee lemon tea or a hot chocolate, as <laughs> you know well. You got a toilet in here? <laughs> oh, I'm in a terrible attack of the thirst here, Bobby. I'll have a pint of lager, please. Victor's buying. Hey! Otherwise, I'll go to that clergy and start blabbering. You rat! I'll have one and all. You know me, Victor, I like you, but it's sticky in. So you <laughs> buys my silence. Right, you bastards! <laughs> it was obvious they were going to do that. Do you think he's buying it? Oh, I don't know, Victor. He looks a wee bit suspicious to me. Here's what I'll do. I'll take a fall. Oh, I, I did that. Oh! You doing, you bloody clown? I don't know be better if he's seen you doing it. <laughs> right, I will cue you. To fall, right? <coughs> Hold it. Hold it. Oh. Nah, false alarm, that's not right. <laughs> that's you. Hey. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, the indignity. Jags, <laughs> I'm hip. Oh, shit. Finished. Hi. There's nothing wrong with you, is there, Dad? Oh, fuck. No. Give us your keys. Oh. Keys. What's he need your keys for? I'll see you back at the flat. Ah. Shit. That'll be five pounds sixty for your drinks, Mr. Brando. <laughs> ah, now, Doctor, give it to me straight. I can take it. I'm a man. Are they going to have to hack it off? <laughs> yes. What? You really should have come to as much sooner with this. Eh? There's been no circulation in that foot for far too long. Oh, you bastard. Oh, shit. <laughs> you good eyes there, there's no cars. Oh shit! Ah. <laughs> oh David! You were standing there waiting on it. I couldn't move. Ah, I'll tell you what, I'll give that spray wife for juice, she's bloody good. But that's it. It's over now. Oh no! In the clear. This is it! This is... Ah. <laughs> yes! Yeah. Good, uh, good comedy dodge there. I like it. John! John! No, Dad, forget it. John! Nothing wrong with you now, is it, Dad? For God's sake, hold on! No. Look, stop right there. I'm very angry at you right now, Dad. I know, I know. I'm way out of line. Out of line? I flew over here worried sick. For what? For nothing. There's absolutely nothing wrong with you. I know. I know. Do you not think I've got better things to be getting on with than travelling over here for a joke? For a prank? Listen, son. I'm busy. I'm at a very important part of my career right now. I'm sorry. Oh, it's a bad way to behave. I've been stupid. I'm yep. a... Sp Silly old bastard. Yep. But you, you never bloody phone. I'm on my own here. Apart from Jack, I've nobody. D did you know that Jack took me with him to Canada a few weeks back there? Canada? I see, you didn't even know that, did you? No. No. I mean, did it ever occur to you that I might be missing you? I mean, all this... I'm sorry. I'm missing you. What like was Canada? Smashing! Aye. Oh, I love their grub. Full of big fatties. 
Lots of eggs. How does this sound, eh? We'll all come over this summer. Spend some time together. Aye, aye. No, no, no. We'll come over. I'll book it when we get back to the house. I mean it. I'll know let you do. Really? Aye. You guys all right, are you? Aye, aye. Aye, I've said my sorries, Jack. Aye. Aye, we're good. And that right, John? Brand new dad. Yeah, glad to hear it. <laughs> Jack! Get back in the pipe! Aye, I know. Well, there's a hell of a lot going on, you know. <laughs> so John's coming over in the summer with the family? Come here. I am indeed. Not much smashing. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Oh, I can't wait to see their faces when I tell them they're not going to Disney World. They're going to Craig Lang. <laughs> <laughs> Disney World. The council's just repainted all the swings in the park. <laughs> yeah. I'll buy a nice boat and a vids. Mm. The new Greg's opening High Street. <laughs> Disney World. It's a out. Yeah, yeah. steak store. Oh, shit. Ooh. I've got some stuff to say. I'll wait till after the credits, so. though. So John busted you right there in the Klansman. Aye. That's a shame. I'm sorry I missed that. Some state of affairs, isn't it, Winston? Pish. The way I see it, I've been lucky. It could have been my lungs. I, I was doing 80 fags a day, senior service to No arsing about with your poofy silkies. <laughs> it's funny that, isn't it? You never think that when you're lighting up, that one day they might have to hack a limb off you, but that's what's happened. Anyway, what's been happening with you? Jack's back in the pipe. Oh, good, aye. Aye. Uh, Hard to imagine you without it. Oh, aye, the guy in the bed at the end of the world. Wants to buy my slippers off me. Have you heard that, aye? Aye. For every arsehole in the ward. <laughs> right, we'll, uh, we'll away and let you get a rest, Winston. Aye, let me get a rest. There you are, sweetheart. Look, well, there's a bit of company for you, Mr Ingram. Winston, is that you? Winston, <laughs> 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 tell you what Nurse. happened to me, Winston. Nurse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't think Winston's going to enjoy his time in hospital. So here's the thing. Um, I was thinking coming into this episode, what they're going to try and do for a season finale. Because I think Still Game thus far has not really been a, dare I say, conventional sitcom wherein you often typically have um, something that, that typically happens in either the opening episode or the, the start uh, or the finale of an episode, which then kind of gives you a bit of an ongoing storyline for the, for the next season. Um, and with this there hasn't really ever been one for for still game however they sort of have now um as a result of this so it was a nice callback to the canadian uh, ep episodes which was the sort of series 2 finale and and the uh, series uh, sorry series yeah series 2 finale and series 3 opener but it's also a callback to one of the earliest episodes in um, in series one, which is where um, Victor was expecting John to come and visit him. Obviously, they had the issues for for the for the voicemail that was left for him. He couldn't hear him over the tannoy, you know, the the, the train station, all, all that kind of issue. I think this is the first time we've now seen John. I could be entirely wrong, but I don't remember seeing him before. Um, It'd be interesting if he does pop back up in the show, or at the very least is mentioned. Um, similarly with, um, uh, with with Jack's daughter, uh, Fiona. It'd be interesting if she 
Because I can't imagine uh, Jack going over to Canada again. If there is going to be a situation, it's more likely going to be Fiona coming over to Scotland. Um, now, that whole scene uh, right at the end, uh, as you probably saw, would have saw, it, it brought me to, to tears a little bit. Um, I, I'm a sucker for emotional scenes. I, I can't help it. You know, I, I, I do find things emotional. And, you know, it, it, it's, it's something that, in a way, I'm kind of proud of, that I am, you know, emotionally vulnerable. Because I think for guys, there is always that expectation that men be men, and men can't show their emotions, and men's got to be strong, and blah, 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 blah. Nah, I, I, I think, uh, you know, there's a different definition of man in the uh, in the 21st century. Um, and, um, yeah, that, that scene was just three seasons in the making, and it was needed. And... Although I will say that Victor was in the wrong for misleading his son, John. John has a bigger part to play. Because it's clear that he has been emotionally distant from his dad. For whatever reason. Whether it is work. Whether it is just his geographical distance. If it's something else. You know, I don't know. Um, but it is a case that I feel... Ultimately, it's just something that they need to have a better relationship. And unfortunately, that relationship hasn't been there for a long while. It's left them strained. It's left them both uh, angry uh, at, at one another. It's left them not having a great communication. I don't know if anything happened in the past which led them to that point or if Again, it was just because he moved to South Africa. He's apparently got some sort of big, important job for whatever it is. Um, yeah, it'd be nice if, if they, as a result of this episode, they now have a closer relationship. I'd like to hope that that's now going to be the case. Um, the two of the kind of storylines in this one was, of course, um, Isa and the tarot card thing. Um, there's been... Um, stuff I've said on here before in, in the past that I'm just I'm not a believer in psychics and fortune tellers and all that kind of stuff I, I believe that uh, in most cases they are scam artists um, or they are people who genuinely believe they have some sort of gift and they try and convince people that they do really have this gift but I feel that the majority of them probably know it's a scam and they do what they can to do it um, ultimately it did lead to a nice comedy moment with the, with the child in, in the car which I can imagine happening uh, especially these days with, with more the electric cars that you, you see for kids like my, my nephew got one for it was either his first or his second Christmas he got this sort of like remote control car that he can also drive it's, it looks like a Mercedes kind of thing and um yeah, the amount of times he's been driving that, but I'll, I'll go with him down to the park or something, and he nearly knocks me down or, or whatever. So, uh, yeah, it's um, it, it, it could happen more and more often. As for Winston, that is uh, that's a tough deal. You know, he's, he's lost, I think, for the sounds of it, one of his legs, um, if not both, I, I, I don't know. Um, but definitely at least one of them. And he's going to have to adjust to that now. Now, I don't know if this is going to make any kind of recurring appearance or if that is now just it and they never really mention it again and he just, I don't know, walks differently or, or whatever. So that will remain to be seen. We'll, we'll obviously find that out in the later series. Obviously, as I always say with anything, no spoilers, please. Uh, but that's going to round up my reaction and my brief little afterthoughts with Still Game, the last episode of the third series. I've really enjoyed it. I hope you guys did too. Uh, so make sure you stick around for the uh, for the next episode where we will be going uh, into series four. Uh, uh, of course, unless I've, I've somehow missed an episode, which you guys let me know if I have somehow missed an episode. I don't think I have, but again, let me know if, if I did, because I didn't think I did it with series two, but here we are. 
But thank you so much for joining me on this journey once again. As for today, my name's Kevin, I am a geek, and you've been watching Kevin the Geek. Goodbye.